Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. A very modern green man is something we're going to discuss tonight. Ye old wild man of the woods has been seen multiple times in modern day Britain. Now the green man and the wood wolf have been part of British history since the dawn of time. We see them in carvings and artwork, churches and fonts. They have poems written about them and maidens are said to sometimes be stolen by them. Although in some cases, the maidens did not put up too much of a fight. So to hear reports of people seeing them through history is something that we accept. Of course, back then it would have been seen as witchcraft and fancy to see a face within the trees. Some kind of druidic magic or hocus pocus. Now the green man has been seen in our modern times by ordinary individuals. And there have been reports made by these people in the UK who report seeing someone or something watching them from the foliage and it seems to be using the leaves and the shade to hide within it. Here are some of those reports. This report went, came into another blog, it didn't come into me and it's from a gentleman called Mark Thompson and he says, I now live in New Zealand but originally I lived in England, I lived in London in a town called High Wycombe. My encounter involves the legendary green man. The green man is a legend of old and dates back thousands of years, just like the Native American stories of Sasquatch, said Mark. And in my case, I grew up next to the Chiltern Hills, which spans across the southwest to the northwest of England. It's a very dense wooded area and it has many legends of the green man and Hearn the Hunter and Wood Woose and Jack O'Lantern and Willow the Wisp, Jack of the Green, etc. Some parts of the UK were not inhabited until the late 1800s, so forestry was quite big in England. I was six years old when I had my encounter, and it happened behind my house, where there was a wooded area that led out of town towards the countryside. I was with some older boys who were carrying a ladder to erect a swing on a tree, and in the middle of this wooded area, there was a meadow full of long grass, but there was a clearing within the meadow, a clearing within the woods. Once we directed the swing and had goofed around for a bit, the bigger boys had decided it was time to head home. I was the last one to leave. I can't remember following the bigger boys at a distance. That was probably about 20 yards ahead of me. I don't know what made me stop and look to my left, but on the edge of the meadow, beside a large tree, there was a huge figure. I remember craning my neck to look. I was looking up at a creature's face. Now I estimate it would have been about seven to eight feet tall. The creature had lots of blonde hair draping down from its body, which was full of twigs and leaves. It looked like a ghillie suit. The face was huge. It had deep set eyes and the long thin lips were open and it was smiling at me. I thought it was smiling, but the rest of the face wasn't. I think it was showing its teeth. I was literally 10 feet away from this thing and I ran. I ran as fast as I could and I caught up with the bigger boys. And by this time they were nearing the edge of the woods. I never told anyone about this sighting for years afterwards and I'd have nightmares about this creature coming through the woods and coming to get me. I would have nightmares that this thing was in our house downstairs. When I laid on my pillow my heart would beat it would sound like its footsteps were coming to get me. It really did shake me up. It had a massive effect on my childhood. Now I had no confidence growing up and I couldn't get this image out of my head. Some other people I know have seen the creature but they'd seen it at night so they mistook it for a ghost and reported it as a ghost. Now this report reminds me of quite a few others. The one case in the Stanley County Durham where the child who was also six years old saw a wild man in the trees when building a tree swing and she was playing with older girls and the wild man that she saw was holding a knife or a sharp object um, not too far away in Sheffield there's two cases two separate incidents of two sets of diff children not that they knew, knew each other the incidents are not related in any way other than the same set of circumstances happened they were both building within the woods building rope swings and they both encountered creatures up within the tree. 
Now the Milton Camp departure happened in 2016, so that's quite a modern day report to report a green man. Deborah, after seeing your work on the British Bigfoot and the Wood Wolves, and the fact that you're based in the UK, I feel comfortable sharing my experience with you. I've not shared it online before, as to be honest, I didn't have a clue where to report this to. This all happened one day, it was the beginning of August last year, and I was out walking with my son in a small woodland close to my house. I stay in a small village called Milton of Campsa, and we were out that day well off the beaten track. It's a pretty old set of woods with two 300 year old trees. Now nothing out of the ordinary happened at first, but we were quite a ways in there. And about 15 to 20 yards in front of us, what I thought was a poacher in a ghillie suit. This poacher stood up and started to make his way at a good pace away from us moving swiftly. He was moving quickly and not looking back in our direction and I found that really odd. Given at the time of day, I was sure this was a poacher. I wanted to confront him. I was angry at the fact that someone would be firing a gun or a bow so close to where people live and walk with their families and dogs, etc. I decided to give him a piece of my mind. So I set off after him. And as I got closer, he rounded the back of an old oak tree and he was gone, completely vanished. I couldn't see him anywhere. At this point, given how I was still thinking it was a poacher, I shouted out loud, and believe me, I ranted loud enough so that if he went to ground, he would still hear me, as I was pretty angry at this point. But I heard a strange rumbling sound at the time, which sounded kind of like the big tree was ready to come down, and it was coming from the oak, the, tr the oak tree that the poacher had gone behind. I played it down to nothing, given the fact I often hear weird stuff all the time in the woods. I can't explain that, so I just brushed it off until I got home. I never did find him, and it wasn't until later that day and I was telling my father about what had happened earlier, and he mentioned so matter-of-factly that I'd most likely seen the green man. Now that's the first time I've ever heard this name in connection with the forest, but everyone I talk to now is so matter-of-fact about it as if it isn't so strange at all. So needless to say, I spend every spare minute I can in the woods now, not to prove anything to anyone, more to see what I can find for myself. The Green Man of Bolly. I was lucky enough to be given permission to share an amazing photograph. Um, and if you're listening to the podcast or listening on YouTube, you will see the photograph in the uh, thumbnail image. And it was a British wildman researcher and his main research area is just south of Northumberland, an area of vast wilderness and many lakes and streams, woodlands galore and strange tales of howls and screams and rampant yeets. It's not only an area of important habitat, but it also the border between Scotland and England. And at some points it's just 84 miles wide, making it the quickest way to cross from coast to coast here in the UK. Now the photograph was taken by the researcher John and his son and it does appear to show a face hiding within the greenery. Now on their investigation the night, on the night in question, John's son suddenly felt aware of being watched. So he always does at times like this, he took some photographs. Now now there are numerous reports from witnesses all across the northeast of England and Bolland is also home to obviously the legend of the Bolland Beast and from Harwood through Kielder all the way down to Bolland there are reports of an upright tall hairy unknown biped uh, often said to walk away into the woods there are reports of tree knocking and howls and all of the usual stuff now we go back to Yorkshire again and the green man the face in the trees Bartry the summer of 1972 now this witness report came in from Joe, and this is what happened to me one summer's day. It was the afternoon and I was playing out as a child in Bartry in Doncaster. I saw something so strange that the experience remains with me to this day. The face in the foliage that I and a school friend saw happened around the time that I was 15. I'd say approximately 1972. My friend and I were playing truant from school. And we knew we couldn't be caught if we went a certain to a certain area. Not really ideal, but it was out of the way and no adults could see us. But it, we were messing about in an old abandoned sewage works. 
known locally as Dead Dog Island, and we shouldn't really have been there. And when we were there, we noticed a face watching us from the brambles. He, a she, was laying flat on the belly, deep and hidden, well in the bushes and the grass. So I couldn't see the body. I have no idea of size or height. But what we could see was the face. Whatever this thing was, it was hairy, and it looked like the green man. And the pictures and the artworks that you see here in the UK. It seemed to me at the time that it was hiding, it had the foliage on its face, or it was using the foliage and the greenery to mask its face and hide in plain sight. His skin was dark and he had small dark eyes, and he was just looking at us, observing what we were doing. My friend was really scared and frightened, but I was more interested. It looked like the foliage was being used to disguise his face, somehow. Or was it a mask made from grass and leaves? I couldn't work it out. He didn't try to move or approach us, and we ran off. And he didn't try to follow us either. He just stayed in position. And as far as I know, he just stayed in, in the brambles. I can still remember the incident as clear as day. I wasn't scared and I really wanted to know more. But my friend running left me there alone with him. So I quickly followed her out of there. <clears throat> now, as you can imagine, that took me straight back a little bit to an incident that happened only 10 years later, not too far away, um, which was my account, 1982, and I was 15 and I was working it with a friend and I saw something in the greenery that was watching us. But on that occasion, obviously, it poked its head out and I got a really good look at it. But I wonder, what do you think? Is our green man, the wood woes, the British Bigfoot that we see today? Is it a completely separate species? Is it something we just don't understand? What are you, your views on it? If you want to help us investigate cases like these, let's go out to the sighting areas and have a look and meet up with like-minded people and have a chat online. Uh, let me know. Get in touch with me in email and join our members group. We've had quite a few uh, members from Europe join this week, which has been absolutely wonderful. We've now got to go make Canadians and Americans on the map. So regardless of whether you are, if you just want to have a chat with like-minded people, or as I say, when reports come in, go out to the sighting areas and have a look at them, or go to the, the existing sighting areas and do some um, area reports for me, and I will pop them up on the end of each sighting report. I think it gives people a much better idea of what the area is like. Um, it's great looking on a map, but it's nothing uh, compared to ground truth. So as I say, just get in touch with me in email and we'll get that all sorted out for you. So until next time, thank you very much for tuning in. Good night.